Hi friends, I'm Maad Aftar from Easy Approach and it's the 35th video of Flutter video series. In the last video, we have integrated Firebase with our Flutter project and in this video, we are going to implement Firebase authentication using email address and password. We'll first register the user on this screen in the Firebase and then we will allow user to log in by this screen. And once the credential matches with the Firebase data, we'll navigate the user to the home screen. But I prefer you to watch the last video, which is the 34th part of this video series before starting this video if you haven't already watched. So now let's get started. The very first thing that you need to do in order to implement Firebase user authentication in your Flutter application is you need to go in your Firebase project. It's a project which we have integrated with our Flutter project. So firstly, you need to enable the authentication method. So you have to go in authentication and you have to set up the sign in method. And as we are actually registering the user with email and password, we have some different options as well. Like we can authenticate user with phone number. We can authenticate with Google account. And there are so many options and we'll be covering different options in the next videos. But in this video, we are just uh, uh, talking about email and password. So you just have to click here and you need to enable it and you need to save it. And now you are good to use uh, the authentication in your Flutter project. So now let's first register the user. So here is the uh, registration form in this registration screen and we have different text field in it like we have discussed already and we have uh, associated the controllers uh, with each of the text form field so that we can get uh, the data from these fields. So we have a total four controllers. The first one is email, the pass and the name and the image. So we just uh, initially required these two things, the email and password in order to register the user. And just after the registration of user will update uh, some data or some user information like the name of the user and the profile image. So now we are good to register the user. So I'm making a feature inside this registration clause in which I'll register the user in Firebase. So let's make a future. And the return type of the future will be bool so that uh, we'll return a true or false. If the user has successfully registered, you'll uh, will return true or if he has not registered successfully, we'll return false. So let's give some name like register user. And you need to write here async as well since we'll be using await keyword inside this future. And now firstly, we need to get get the instance of Firebase authentication. So uh, let's write here Firebase auth and you need to initialize it with Firebase auth dot instance. We need to define the parameters here as well. The first one would be the email and the second one would be password and the name and the DP, the display picture URL. So it would be string as well. Oh, sorry. I've given here same name. So let's change it to pass and right here name and at the last the url of image and now we can register the user so the feature that we are going to use in order to register the user in firebase is called create user with email and password so firstly you need to pass your email and here you need to pass the password and now we need to save this information as well with the user, but we cannot directly save this information while creating the user, but we can rather save this information or update this information after the creation of user. So we need to get the instance of currently created user. So you need, you can get the instance of the user. You first need to get the authentication result. So let's uh, give some name and you can just cut it and paste it here but as it is a future you need to use here a wait so it would return you the result of the authentication and to get the user you can use result dot user so this would return you the user and then you can update uh, the value or the data associated with the user like name and image URL for updating the user information you first need to write here user update info and you have to make object of it. And now inside this, you can save the display name and the image URL. So you just have to give your name. And here you need to give the URL of the display image. So this is good. Now we have, uh, uh, made, we have made the user update info. Now we need to update the user information. So you can use here user.update profile 
and here you need to pass the info which is the updated info so this is it we have configured or we have registered the user successfully it's better to keep it inside try block so that we can catch exception if we encounter any we just need to print the exception and here we'll return false but if it is successfully registered the user we just uh, return true so this is it we have successfully made uh, the user a registration uh, future and now we need to pass this value from the form uh, inside this on press so that we can uh, send it to firebase for registration now let's first get all the string values from form so let's first get the email so you can get it by email controller and you need to use dot text and it's better to first convert it into a string and then to use trim function to is to remove all the white spaces and now let's do same for all of the other fields so the second one would be password so you need to use here password controller and the third one would be name of user you can use name controller and at the last image controller to get the url of the image and now we need to call the future that we have made for registration so we just need to use register user and here you need to pass the email name and password so this is good and as this would return either true or false but it is a future so you first need to make a boolean variable a result and as it is a future you need to use here await and since you are using here await you need to use here async as well so this is all good and now we can check if the result is true we can navigate to the login screen so you can use navigator dot off and you need, to, you need to pass your context and you can use just dot push and now we need to use material page root inside it we have a builder and we need to pass the context and now we can initialize here login screen and this is all good but if it is not true we can just print uh, something so this is good we have done with the registration and now we have to work on login screen and we have to call we have to make another function uh, which is a future which will be the future here so we have to make another future here for the login so now we'll make the future for login so just write here future and the return type of the future will be firebase user because we'll be returning the firebase user once the credential will get matched to the firebase data so that we can pass it to the home screen and show all the data so just write here login and we need to pass here two things the first thing is the email and the second thing is the password and make it make it async now firstly we need to we need to initialize the firebase authentication instance and now we need to use the future for signing in into application so the future we are going to use is called sign in with email and password and here you need to pass email and here you need to pass the password and as we want to return the uh, logged in user as well from this future so we need to uh, first make it an instance of authentication result and you can cut it and just paste it here and you need to use here await as well since it's the future and now you can get the currently logged in user by using result.user so this would be the currently logged in user and now we can return this so you just need to return the user and we can also wrap it inside the try block And in the catch, we'll just write here E and we'll just print exception and we'll return null. 
So this is it. We have made the logged in, uh, the login feature as well. And now we need to just pass all the values, uh, all the data from the form to this uh, future. So inside the on press, we'll first get all the values from the future, like we did in the registration case. Sorry, all the values from form. So we have associated two controllers here as well. The first one is email controller. And the second one is the pass controller. Uh, it's just the same like we did in the registration. And now we can get the text of email by using email controller dot tags dot to a string to convert it into a string and to so we'll use this trim function as well so that we can remove the wider spaces in order to avoid any sort of exception and now we can use pass controller dot tags dot to a string dot trim so this is it and now we need to uh, pass this data in this login future so you can call the login future and you need to pass here email and password and as this would return us firebase user and we need to use here await as well since it is a future and as we are using await we need to use here async as well and now we first need to check if it is null or not null so if it is not null it means the user has successfully logged in and we can pass this data to the home screen so that it can so that uh, we can show the user uh, his data but if it is not null but if it's null we can show some sort of error so just write if user is not equals to null so now you have to use navigator.off because we want to go on home screen and we need to define here builder we need to first pass here context and now we can initialize the home screen and inside the home screen we have two properties the first one is the name so we can access the username by using user dot display name and we have another property image url and you can access it by using photo url so this is good but if it is null so we can print error and i think we have done everything we have uh, made the future for log for registration and we have made it for a login screen as well and now uh let's see what's in the home screen we have just two properties name and image url and we have showed it in column widget so now if i run it first uh, let's open the terminal so that uh sorry the console so that we can see if there is some error so the application has successfully started now let's give some values Mostly, let's give my email address. I haven't done the validation in the form, but I prefer you to do it since we have limited time. So that is why I haven't done this. Now let's give some password. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, you can see it. I hope you would not use my account. And now let's give some display name like Mars. And let's give some photo URL. I have uh, a photo. So we can copy it. You can use your own. Just paste it. And now it should not show some error. So now if I tap on this register button. So yes, it successfully created the user. And now if we go in the Firebase console. In this user, so if I refresh it. So yeah, you can see uh, my email address here. So we have registered successfully. Now if I log in with the same data. Now let's give the password uh, what it was uh, one two three four five six now if i click on login it should show the home screen wow so you can see the home screen and you are logged in successfully successfully <laughs> so it's it's just the excitement so so we have done the uh, firebase authentication with the email and password and it's just the core functionality or the core implementation of firebase authentication there are so many holes in this you can uh, like you can show acknowledgement when the user would give some wrong value and you can do a lot of stuff and you can play with it so this is this is it from this video in is it in this video we have learned firebase authentication with email and password and in the next video we'll talk about firebase authentication with mobile phone verification so thank you for watching